I'm Jessica Lombard, Associate Superintendent. And I'm Superintendent John Berkey, and this is Huntley 158 Today. Well, we know we're all here for education, and we spend you know, a good portion of our time working to ensure that our kids learn in the best way that they can. But the backbone behind that is to ensure that we have appropriate funding to make sure that the school district can operate. We've got two individuals here who work in our finance department that really help make sure all of those things are in place for our students to be able to have that great education. We've got Mark Altmeyer, who is our Chief Financial Officer, and Debbie Salm, who is our Director of Fiscal Services. So welcome today. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Debbie, can you give us a little bit about your background and tell us about what does the Director of Fiscal Services do here? Um, sure. Um, I'm just beginning my ninth year here in Huntley. Um, a little bit of history. I worked, I've been in the um, school district about a little over 25 years. Um, started actually as a secretary of the superintendent for about 13 years. Moved on to the business office side in 2004 and that led me here to, to Huntley. I uh, really enjoy my job. Um, I uh, oversee the fiscal services department. We t um, take care of all the purchasing for the district, the um, accounts payable, student activity funds. Um, just kind of work on really the day-to-day -day operation of the school district. So Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in business and in finance, and then what do you do as the Chief Financial Officer for District 158? Sure, no problem. Um, you know, I think my background um, as CFO of the school district is a little different than most CFOs of most school districts. Um, my background is that of public accounting. I'm a CPA, so I spent six, seven years in public accounting, followed by a number of years working for large corporations such as Enterprise Rent-A-Car and General Electric. So I've been with the district um, nine years. I oversee the finance department, of course, um, oversee food services, technology. I work with operations and maintenance. I work with transportation. Um, and I also work with safety and security. So um, every day is a little different. You know, there's a lot to do. Um, I, could, I could jump into food services, I could jump into technology, uh, but obviously my background is, is primarily in accounting and finance, which is kind of where my heart lies with, with the CFO position. So one of the big things that's been in the news a lot in the last, really all summer, is the state of Illinois has been wrestling with a budget. They didn't have a, even have a budget for two years. But one of the, the big things is school funding has been talked about a lot, and there's something called the evidence-based model that was talked about and ultimately was uh, passed just several weeks ago. Can you explain what that is and how that's going to impact Huntley 158? Well, the evidence-based model is a huge victory. Well, let me start with that. That's a huge victory for Illinois school districts and the students of Illinois. Uh, for years, we've been, we've been operating on a funding formula model that is archaic, it's inequitable. Um, we had school districts that were in dire need of, of funding um, that weren't receiving that funding. Uh, we have other school districts that were receiving in, in excess of the funding that they needed to adequately provide education to the students of their district. So the evidence-based funding model um, is a model that, uh, boy, there must be 100, 200 different people uh, from various uh, associations got together and created the funding model with it's based on 27 based elements, estimated cost, determine, determining an adequacy um, amount, and then it's adjusted for demographics, and it's also adjusted and regionalized for salaries based on where that school district is located in the state of Illinois. So it is a much more equitable um, type of funding formula uh, that determines the adequacy that each district currently has with funding, and then moving forward, based on state funding, uh, districts will be funded appropriately so that all students are receiving equitable funding moving forward. So we are actually one of the lower funded districts uh, in, in the Chicagoland area. So how does that affect uh, us? You know, as, as you know, we, we are the lowest, one of the lowest operating costs per pupil districts in the western suburbs for a K through 12 district. And being 25, 26% less than the state average, it's pretty clear that we are not adequately funded in terms of ed education. Although the numbers are still being crunched by the Illinois State Board of Education, um, we are expecting a very favorable positive impact of funding to the district um, as a result of the new evidence-based funding formula. 
So we've talked about the state, we've talked about how that impacts, and then at the district level, we go ahead and we set our budget on an annual basis. Both of you are involved in that at different levels of that. What does that look like and how does that look this year and moving into the future? Currently for, for this year, we're looking for fiscal year 18, we're looking at a, a fairly flat budget. Um, going forward, well, depending on now what this new funding means for us, I think I'm going to lead you into that. Absolutely, absolutely. I think one of the challenges we have as being one of the lowest operating costs per pupil districts around is a lot of people ask, well, I'm sure they ask you, Dr. Berkey, they ask me all the time, how are you able to do the things you're doing from an innovative standpoint, whether it's digital transformation and every student having a one-to-one -one uh, device or whether it's some of the programming we're doing they ask how we're able to do the things we're doing today on the budget we have on the on the low operating cost dollars that we have within our budget and I think it's two reasons number one we prioritize how we spend money which is obviously important um, but I think we're always looking to operate a little more efficiently Right? I think we know we're operating effectively, but we're also operating very efficiently in order to only spend $9,400 per pupil um, and having the things we have. Um, this year's budget, just like last year's budget, we ensure year after year that we, we continue to have the things that we need uh, to continue the momentum of the district. Right? We've got a lot of things in the pipeline, whether it's one-to-one -one learning, whether it's the medical academy, whether it's the engineering academy and making sure that we have the resources set aside to whether it's implement specialized innovative programming or it's having the resources set aside so that we could do a roof replacement, so that we could do capital improvements. The good news is the FY18 budget has all of that um, and we continue the momentum um, that we've had for the last several years doing those things. Well, I think you both do a, do a great job and I think the value that our taxpayers get is very, very high. We get a very good result in our district for not a lot of money spent. So thank you for your time you. uh, to be on our show today. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us at Huntley 158 today. If there are future guests you'd like seen on our show, topics you'd like discussed, or questions you'd like an answer to, please reach out to us at our district Facebook page or Twitter, hashtag Ask 158. Until next time.